can I buy a ticket if I don't attend? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll sell you 20. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a deal. Let's talk about hiring people. Let's let's talk about hiring people. Specifically, user experience people. Oh, those people. <laughs> I know, because there comes a time in everyone's life, you either are, are trying to be hired or you're trying to hire. We've been on both ends of that. Which shall we tackle first? I think let's talk about, since we're, we're well, I don't know. It's funny because we're both kind of in the position where we're in this middle ground of of we do both. We get hired by our clients. So we have to be a good UX person to be hired and, and make that case. And we also work with other people. Yeah, we hire subcontractors or collaborators. Collaborators, yes. From a, let's call it a, a management perspective. Okay. Because I hear about this. I hear about both, but let's, let's start with that one. Right. Um, so if you're looking to hire, say you're starting up a new team, you want some UX love. Settle down. Love is the wrong Settle thing. down. <laughs> So you're a manager or a director and you're starting up a team. I'm a manager or a director and I'm starting up a team. Perfect. Thanks. <laughs> I'll be playing the role of hiring manager today. Because <laughs> I because I, I talk to people in both in two situations where you're a experienced UX person, which makes it easier to hire. But a lot of times they're not an experienced UX person. And so they don't even know where to begin. Obviously, in this in this conversation, there are going to be a lot of assumptions we're going to have to make because things can be so contextual where someone might be all ready to hire someone, their budget gets pulled out from under them for some reason because the company takes a different direction. I think in, and in that cases, in, in many cases where you're starting up a team, that whole contributor slash lead or manager role is more common because you have a smaller staff. And so you, I think you have to stretch everyone and everyone's kind of doing a little bit of everything versus if you're a bigger team, you can afford to have a dedicated manager type person that's mm -hmm. just oversight and mentorship and stuff like that. So I think as a starting point, if you're starting up a new team, the whole dual role makes more sense, player coach or whatever you want to call it. But to find the right person, you know, you have to do a few things. You have to assess skills. And then as people say, the culture fit. <laughs> so, I hate yeah, that. Person, I, I hate do that too. So much. <laughs> culture fit. Um, but, you know, we let's call it what it is. Be, but we also want people to be exactly like us. Right. Well, I call it the personality test. I mean, you you want people that are going to, you're going to want to work with. Right. Um, yeah. You don't have to be your best friend, obviously. But, and that doesn't mean they have to agree with you, which is a whole nother personality trait. But, yeah. you know, having people that you respect, but ha can have uh, good debates with or, or good conversations with. I had a conversation yesterday with someone about that, how working with people that are a little bit different or very different, but, re but respectful mm -hmm. is actually a really good team dynamic to have because you get different perspectives. Um, and I think that should be weighed into anyone who's building a team or looking to hire. Hiring someone that you think you're going to be able to get along with is really important. I think it can be somewhat easy to assess whether or not someone has the skills to do the job. I think it can be a little harder and also it's more important to find out, do I actually want to work with this person for the next five years or, or however long? Mm -hmm. Where I've seen both when I've been part of the hiring process, when I've been brought in to, to help with the interviews, or when I've led the hiring process, when I've been the one hiring, or when I've been the one looking for a job, it feels like there's so much more emphasis put on skill assessment. Part of me gets it, but the other part is like, that isn't really where I'd want to, when I'm hiring, where I want to spend my time. Right. Or not spend my time, but not spend most of my focus on that. Right. Because you can assess that, again, like you said, not easily, but reliably. Right. Yeah. I think you get a sense for that fairly quickly. And, and the personality kind of is multi-layered because it's not just personality on the surface of, hey, this is a good person. I, I don't mind working with him, mm -hmm. but also understanding their work ethic and are they going to work a full day? Are they going to produce what they say they're going to produce? Are they going to meet their deadlines? You could be a great guy or gal, mm -hmm. but if you're missing deadlines, that's not going to be a good thing. 
that is the really hard part to assess is the work ethic in my mind. Because personality, I can get a pretty good read on someone if I'm just have a half hour, 45 minute conversation with them. And we can assess their their work, like how can they, you know, what is their methodology that they like to do mm -hmm. and how do they actually do their job? But assessing work ethic, I think is, is, a, is a challenge. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's not something where you can say, so, you know, if we have a deadline to meet, would you right. chip in and help out? Because of right, course, right. during the interview process, they're going to say, oh, of course I would. Right. And yeah, you can always ask questions along those lines of like, well, tell me about a, a project where you were running behind and what did you do? And you know, just hear if they can recall a story where mm -hmm. they came through in the end or they said, oh, we, we missed our deadline. <laughs> right. <laughs> we got scope. Okay. <laughs> right, right. We got scope. We shipped a year later. Yeah, you can ask those questions and get them to reflect on their history. That's that's a tough one. Other than, you know, talking to previous employee employers, um, which, you know, that's not super reliable either. Right. Sort of embedded in the question of how do you find a good UX slash service design slash product design, whatever the title may be. Again, we're not getting into <laughs> defining titles, it's sort of a broadly speaking, human centered discipline kind of area. What makes for a good person doing that stuff? Yeah. And I think that's something that everyone should you know, if you're going through this hiring process, really be deliberate about like understanding what are the traits that you're looking for. Like I always, not really jokingly, but I always say to people, like, if you want to get, be successful in doing what we do, you know, there's two rules and you and I know these rules. It's know what you're doing and don't be a dick. <laughs> and to oh, satisfy those, damn you're, it. You're gonna, <laughs> I've been doing it gonna, wrong. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to go places, but no, you have to you know, look at some of those traits, which again, are hard to assess from an interview, but like the, the quote soft skills, which is another term I don't like, but you know, are you curious? Are, are yeah. you passionate? You yeah. know, some of those things, like, are you going to be whatever the opposite of lazy is? <laughs> uh, are you going to be proactive engaged, in getting your work say, done? Engaged. Say. Yeah. Are you going to be proactive in, in getting work done? Again, those things outside of just knowing what to do, it's how do you do your job? If you're a researcher, definitely you have to be personable. You're talking to people, you have to be inquisitive, curious, you know, you have to have that mindset of, you know, good researcher of being a detective. And right. Yeah. I think so curiosity that's... is, is one of the big things for me where, you know, looking at it from me as, as the person hiring, how many questions does this person ask of me about the role? And mm -hmm. when you're looking for someone, it's really how, how curious and how Excited is totally the wrong word because people's interest in, in the topic area or the company or whatever can come across in a lot of different ways. But I guess, I guess it goes back to what, you know, you're the opposite of lazy, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> whatever that is. And another attribute I'll say of, of uh, more about researchers, but I guess this can be applied to designers that I've talked to other hiring managers about is what they're looking for in terms of, again, the opposite of laziness. No, the, like how quick they are to get their work done, how efficient they are mm -hmm. versus how detailed they are. Because sometimes, you know, there's this, this continuum or scale of super detailed people, but then they don't get their work done mm -hmm. because they're so focused on, you know, every, every pixel or yeah. you know, every, I've worked every bit of data versus the people that are super quick, but then they miss details. They miss big, you know, they miss big issues or Mm -hmm. things in the data or they forget to design pages <laughs> in their application. So figuring out where someone is along that continuum is also helpful. And I think that's another thing where you might want to mix, not people that are missing details, but people that can kind of help each other on the team, get their work done right. properly, thoroughly, but also quickly and efficiently. Yeah. Where my brain kind of categorizes that as sort of strategy and, and very detailed oriented. It'd be lovely if everybody was both able to do big picture stuff and, and, and small stuff, not small stuff, but, um, focused stuff as well. But, but that's just not how most people function. Right. Um, that goes back to my point of having a good blended team mm -hmm. with different people, with different skills. Cause I think that helps balance everything out. And this is more in the small, the startup world or the small, small company world is they like to hire the unicorn. And they want to hire the one person that's going to do the research, that's going to do the design, that's going to do the QA testing, that might even do the code of, you know, 
front end code at least. Mm -hmm. And I get people asking me that like, oh, how can I find someone that's going to do all of these things? Mm -hmm. And my response is usually if they exist, they're not going to want to work here for you for nothing. <laughs> right, right. And yeah. if you find someone and you do manage to hire them, they'll be gone in about three months to go over to the West Coast or someone bigger that's going to pay them more. And then you're going to be left trying to fill their spot and you'll have to hire more than one person. Right. So I just tell them, be realistic, hire for the role. Don't try to get it all done in one per one with one person. Right. Because it's it's not going to work out. And even if you get lucky, it's not going to last. Yeah. Hire um, hire assuming you're building a team rather right. than because even if someone can do all that, their work is going to be better if they have someone to collaborate with. So you might as well be hiring for building a team. Uh, yeah, I get that. I get that quite often. Oh, where how can help me find this one person? Help me find one person to do all this stuff. It's just not not realistic. So I think we covered the hiring part. I think I'm trying to think of what's different from what we talked about compared to if you're the person trying to get hired, how to differentiate yourself or, you know, actually get that interview or nail the interview and get the job. And I think we did a show about portfolios maybe and resumes. Did we? I don't remember. We should probably keep track of. <laughs> We've done so many, I can't, but we could always hit it again. I don't I think, think we did. So let's not make this the portfolio episode, but let's just say, I'll say from my standpoint, personally, I have looked at portfolios. I've looked at quite a few portfolios for when I'm hiring people. I have one for when I'm trying to get hired. No one has ever wanted to look at my portfolio. <laughs> right. And I think speaks more to most of my clients come from word of mouth and referrals, but everyone should have one and keep it up to date. So when you need it, you have it. Same thing with a resume. Hardly anyone asks for my resume, but I have one just, just in case. When you're either going to look for a position or you're hiring for that position, I think what covers a lot of what we've been talking about with understanding their work ethic, understanding their how they approach the work, understanding that strategy versus the detailed work perspective, having at least one use case where you can do a deep dive conversation about, you know, maybe you can't share everything because of some proprietary nature of, of the work. And then also sometimes research just doesn't have visuals to go with it, but being able to talk through and do a deep dive on a use case, I think is a great way to get to all those points. Exactly. Of, you know, this is my approach. This is the kind of work I did. This kind of delivers asked for this is what I produced. And, and even this, maybe this was a mistake or this is something I would do differently. Right. And here's how I handled it. Yeah. Because we all make mistakes. Sometimes. I, I made, I made a mistake yesterday. There you go. So I'm, I've hit my quota for the year. That's right. <laughs> I think that's a good point. Having real stories to tell demonstrates your your previous work history and your your attitudes, your work ethics, all that stuff. You can pull that all in. As the the hiring manager, you can have, or even if if you're doing one of those all day interviews where other people on the team are also interviewing, you can talk about it's probably not in the use case, but you can say, so what was it like working with the front end developer? Tell me about that working relationship you have with them. And that's going to tell you, you know, one you know, how they, how they feel about working with other people, because there's certainly still plenty of people out there who take the lone wolf approach to a lot of this work, yep. which I find continuously ridiculous, but that's an opportunity then to, to have those deeper conversations, uh, even if it's only just, just one thing. So I think from a putting together a portfolio perspective, if you can take one project and make it the most detailed thing you can, I think that would help with a lot of moving those conversations forward with the hiring manager, with the hiring team, and from the person who's trying to get the job to really sort of showcase your capabilities as the person looking for the job and really to help assuage some of those concerns that you have as the hiring manager of, they seem likable, but can they do the job, right? Or I know I can tell they can do the job, but do I want to work with them? So I want to address one other related thing, the, the, the case of the person that wants to get a job, but has no experience mm. because I hear about that a lot too. So they're coming out of some other discipline. They're transitioning to UX design or UX 
research role. They have some related experience, but maybe not practical experience, or they're recent graduates, in which case they should have projects from their class work that they should be able to right. share. But I always tell people, if you don't have work, do work, make something up, make up a project for yourself, design something, research something, just do something that demonstrates that you know how to do it. Um, and be upfront about it. Never lie and say it was for a paying client or something, but just demonstrate, you know, the, the initiative that, well, I wanted to gain experience. So I'm, I learned this on my own. This is how I did it. Yeah. I think it's, I, I won't say easy, easy, but it's easy to, to look at your favorite app and just redesign it. Yep. Exactly. And knowing full well that you don't know what the business cases is, the business cases are for why it was that way in the first place or whatever. But just this is my take on this app. And this is why I made these designs, design decisions. I went out and I talked to 10 people about this topic. I think if anyone's ever interested in making a product around this or a service around this, here are some questions that I answered and that I think should be answered. Yep. I think it's great. Show initiative, show critical thinking, mm -hmm. show, show some stretch, strategic thought. All that can be applied in an interview and explained and a good hiring manager will recognize that as, as positive aspects versus someone that just comes in saying, well, I graduated, but I'm looking to learn. Mm -hmm. If you're trying to separate yourself, that's one way to do it. Yeah. And, and particularly around the people who have a lot of work experience, maybe they're in a different industry and they're coming over to ours. I'm actually pretty interested in potentially working with those people because They've learned all the, again, uh, we just, we should just stop saying soft skills. <laughs> They've learned a lot of the skills that it takes to interpersonal skills. People. Right. Can we say that? Yeah. Uh, soft skills. In, inter, interpersonal skills. Yeah. I don't know. That's harder to say. We'll just say soft it, skills. <laughs> <laughs> it's called S skills. Those S skills. S, S skills. <laughs> yeah. It's. Like they've already gone through how to have a meeting with people and right. how to negotiate for That's a raise or, or something, you know. Or and just they, negotiate with a colleague about a right. design direction yeah. or anything. Yeah. How to be a, an adult and work maturely with other people. Right. And those skills are, are the bulk of what we do. Yes. Negotiation is a big part of what we do. And communication. Mm -hmm. um, using, using Sketch or Figma is not a skill. <laughs> right. It's right. a capability, but you know, it's, yeah. it's not the core of what we really are doing. Because as we know, the tools change quarterly, exactly. yearly. That's right. <laughs> That's right. The shout out to fireworks. <laughs> <laughs> Pour one out for fireworks. <laughs> shout, out, shout out to paper and pencil. I think that's everything that was on my mind as far as hiring goes. Um, we might want to do a part two eventually mm -hmm. if we think of more stuff. But if you have questions, viewer, please yeah. let us know. And uh, we can definitely talk more about it. It's an interesting topic. And like Matthew said, it's one that we're, we're sitting on both sides of right now, personally. Yeah. Well, in talk a, about in it. a lot of ways, it's, it's what we think about the most. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when, okay. when we're, you know, between projects or, or ramping down a project and starting to think about where the next project's going to be. And it's something that we probably could spend quite a bit of time talking about. It would be lovely to, to start getting out there and, and talking to hiring managers and, and saying, so really, what are you doing? And looking at people's portfolios and saying, what are you doing here? Let's call it people. <laughs> Subscribe, like. All those things. Yep. Right. Um, all right. Are we out? Spread our fame far and wide. I'm going to turn my fan back on. I'm dying in here. All right. <sighs> it's so hot. All right. Good show, people. Good show. Good show.